Dream Hey Dreamer, please. Hi guys, welcome back to my channel. So as you know, Dev Kagura has a new time chest reward and there's gonna be 14 days worth of rewards. So we're gonna take a quick look at what are we gonna get. So first off, you'll get Celestial items, 4 Celestial item selectors in fact, and they will be spread out on day 1, 6, 8 and 13. You will also get 4 jewel selectors. These are very similar and almost identical to what he gave during the first time chest, the jewel time chest which was held, I think, a few weeks ago. Okay, so I'll just repeat whatever I suggested um, over there in the previous video over here as well because many new players are coming back because of the very hyped up prime hero selectors, right? And then we'll also be getting a special pet selector. Okay, this is pretty important, so do stay tuned for it. And then we will have four special accessory selectors. And finally, we get a mythical Seven Knights of Old Jewel selector. Now, this was not given before. Okay, so this is the first time we are actually given a free Seven Knight of Old Mythical Jewel. Okay, so let's start with the celestial items. And once again, I've split the table into three types of players, the new, the returning, and the veterans. For the new players, you definitely have to make the best out of the selectors and go for the double speed weapons, two physical and two magic. With this solidified, you will be able to hit the maximum speed limit. This will give you a 50-50 chance to go first in arena and you know, having that kind of probability is definitely going to help you kind of secure the win a little bit rather than you know completely being outsped so this is super important for new players for returning and progressing players i'm sure you have your speed weapons already done up so go for lethal and crit weapons whichever you may lack and depending on the team you use whether it's offensive or magic teams pick the right kind of weapon for your heroes you can even go for hp armor or counter armor if you're if you do not have enough because I'm sure most of you probably focused on the weapons first and not the armor but honestly the armor is also equally important okay for veterans I think it's just about collecting more lethal and crit weapons because of the stamping right because stamps are so important right now sometimes you may have uh, more celestial essence than you have enough equipment to stamp on right so you want to have a variety of gear with different kind of stamps so that when the meta shifts or when new heroes come out you are able to give those heroes the appropriate piece of gear with the right stamp on it so definitely having more gear is going to help you in the long run as well so those were the picks for the celestial items which you should have gotten yesterday if you logged in uh, otherwise you will be starting today Today you'll get the boss jewels. For boss jewels for new players, everything is beneficial honestly because I think this is the first set of jewels you will be getting for your heroes. So honestly, getting anything will be good. Crit and lethal rate is especially great. Not only just for your PvP heroes but for your PvE heroes as well because at this stage you are trying to get more damage out of your PvE DPS. So you definitely need more crit and lethal rate uh, on them until you are able to build up your DPS weapons sufficiently then you may let rely less on uh, crit and lethal rate jewels and give them PvE jewels um, which will be better suited for them okay counter rate I think is something that is good for heroes like Ares and Seek which new players will probably want to have one to use okay so that they'll be able to sustain the other heroes on their team and lifesteal is also kind of a decent a decent choice okay for returning players and progressing players again i think these jewels could still be used on some of your heroes somewhere especially for pve where you probably want to have more block rate or more counter rate for certain heroes crit and lethal rate may be less so but you can still give them you know to certain heroes in your arena if you do not have the dark knight version of the crit and lethal combined substat right so this is still potentially useful life still is great for um, players who are starting to look at their brawl brawl is something where you can only do basic attacks so life steal jewels uh, will come in very handy over there for hp sustenance okay and then for 
veterans, I think there's only two very useful ones, which is lifesteal and block rate. Because, well, for block rate, there's not many other avenues you can get block rate from other than boss jewels, and it's quite high, it's 20%. And lifesteal is definitely good for some of your brawl heroes if you do want them to survive better, right? So, for veterans, I think these are the best picks. Now, for fallout jewels, this is going to be also very important for new players. You must get the speed jewel. If you do not get the speed jewel or if you already have one speed jewel, then you can go for lethal damage. The speed jewel is crucial so that your hero can also be hitting 101 speed with the celestial gear mentioned earlier. And that is sufficient enough for you to be on a speed tie with the enemy. Okay? So lethal damage is also good for newer players because you want to boost your DPS's damage. Over time, I have to say that lethal damage is not going to be very important because you will probably acquire PBE jewels which also have lethal damage. Sorry, lethal damage, not lethal rate. Lethal damage and in fact, the PBE jewel offers higher lethal damage. So over time, this will be phased out and it will become useless. Just saying. You can then look at um, what the progressing and returning players probably will choose which is damage reduction from block and recovery skill and basic attack same for the veterans as well the reason why these are better for returning and veterans because other fallout jewels are all trash honestly um, these are the better ones that can actually be used even up to now okay basic attack you know not so important for returning players because you're not too focused on brawl yet but for veterans basic attack is very important for brawl if you, I mean, it's an optional choice, but you know, you can still go for it. Damage reduction is going to be paired up with block rate. And for veterans and returning players, some of you may be gearing your heroes in PvP with block gear. So this is going to be a very helpful jewel as well. And recovery skill is especially good for heroes like Fenrir and Rudy who actually do heal, do recover HP. So this is also crucial okay, for their survival. Next up, we have Fallout of Old Jewels. For newer players, you have to get Increase Awakening Gauge or the other two options. Okay, Increase Awakening Gauge is without a doubt the most important and the most useful Fallout of Old Jewel all the time. That's, so far, it hasn't gone out of uh, use. Okay, So picking that is definitely not going to be wrong. <laughs> uh, but for new and returning players, but for new players, you may also want to have a copy of the deep. You may also want to have one copy of the damage reflect immunity jewel and a cooldown increase immunity jewel for you to go up in um, item rate and maybe some other PvE modes that you know do have damage reflection. Uh, I think Valika is kind of immune to damage reflection, so you don't have to worry too much about that. But she is susceptible to cooldown increase, so that will be pretty useful. Otherwise, you can rely on traits instead. Okay, yeah, but I would still say go for the increased awakening gauge jewel first, at least one copy of it because Velika does need it and even May can use that very well as well. So for returning and progressing players, same thing, increase awakening gauge, charge speed jewel. You can also start looking at skill use chance because you need to start optimizing your heroes in PvP so that certain heroes will be able to skill first. And this is something that you need to observe and think about who you want to have them skill first, okay? Veterans, you know, can go for almost all the these four options. These four are still the most useful ones. You can just get duplicates of them. Uh, you probably want to have more of the increase awakening gauge. I don't know. You know, at a certain point, uh, you have too many. And I have too many. <laughs> so I'm not even sure what I'm going to pick from this, but yeah. But beyond these four, the other three options I believe are all trash because they have been completely replaced by Dark Knight Jewels which we will talk about now. Dark Knight Jewels, the most important one that every single player needs is survive on 1 HP and you can never complain about having too many survive on 1 HP Jewels and crit and lethal rate Jewels combined. Okay, the reason for this is because ultimately, you know, looking long term you want to mythical awaken dark knight jewels because dark knight jewels when mythical awaken are very good so having more of this is definitely not an issue 
and I would strongly suggest you get more of the survive on 1 HP jewels especially for new and progressing players because you need 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 them on 5 of your heroes on all of your PvP heroes in fact okay the crit and lethal rate jewel is definitely one good option to have you may decide to go for it if you already have 4 survive on 1 HP jewels I think that's not a bad decision okay next up on day 7, I think you get the pet selector. So for the new and returning players, I used to advocate getting kill, but I feel that since this is a free pet selector given to you, you might as well go for Yonji and Delo, or Delo I mean. Okay, the reason why you want to start working on Yonji or Delo is because they are used in both PvP and PvE to a very large extent. So the earlier you get them, you have to awaken them and start building up their pet cheers okay to a very decent level for them to be used in all situations yonji is used in the magic team and dillo is used with the offensive team so same thing yonji will be used with Velika and dillo will be used with Mei. they have team criteria attached to their pet cheers so you have to you know unlock their pet cheer to a higher level so that they will be useful enough um, to be used now for returning and progressing players, same thing, if you still don't have Yonji or Delo, go for them. Otherwise, you can go for Ru and Mr. Armor. And if you kind of already have these four, which are probably the most useful pets. Uh, I did not include Kree here, I forgot. <laughs> but you can definitely go for Kree if you want to build a death team. Otherwise, do what the veterans are going to do. You know, just pick whatever pet you do not have and or, or, and, or get a duplicate for and sell them. I'll get a duplicate and sell them for pet assets. Okay. Next thing is the accessories. Okay, that will be on day 9, 10, and 11 if I'm not wrong. Uh, I will just go through all at once because I didn't see a need to create so many graphics okay, for the video. Um, but yeah, I'm going to go through all at once. And for new players, you're going to start getting the Galidus accessory first, then the Isabella one, then the Celestial one. So it'll be in this order. Okay. Galidus. Go for Galidus Velocity, this will give your hero a hide effect. So what the hide effect does is it prevents your heroes from being targeted by single target attacks. Okay, uh, you may think that oh, but that's not really useful because in PvP you have you're gonna face a lot of AoE damage. That is true, but if you couple this with um, the Guardian Ring, you will not be taking the damage in the first place and you won't be counted. So your damage. So your heroes after doing damage will not be hit again and that will kind of save your hero's HP as well. So currently the meta is very skewed towards height because counter units in the meta are super strong and you really want to hide from all the counters that you can probably... And you really want to hide from the counters that could probably one-shot your hero. Okay, So Galidus Velocity is the way to go for a very long time. Take note that accessories, you do need a lot of them and not just one copy, okay? Because you need to build up the substat. And to build up the substat, you need maybe, I don't know, 20 copies of the same accessory, okay? In order to get their substat to level 5. So it is a process that you have to go through and, you know, having one selector may not make a big difference, honestly, yeah. So for Isabella's accessory, the only one that is useful is the Isabella's illusion that allows you to attack twice on basic attack. And this is why counter heroes are so scary in arena because of this accessory. Because they can hit twice with their effect attacks which ignore block. Okay, so this is the way to go. And you will use this as a substat for your counter hero for PvP. Then for Celestial accessory, I will strongly suggest getting Sharpness and Envy. These are PvE oriented, okay? These are PvE oriented and you should be building them on a Berserker Ring which you probably will not get in the short run. So don't worry about that, just store these Sharpness and Envies in your inventory for a while and when you get a good Berserker Ring, a luxurious Berserker Ring, then you build on them and this will make your DPS have a huge damage increase, okay? And it's really worth it, trust me. And to be honest, I would say the same thing for returning and progressing players, except that for the Celestial Accessory, you can start to get more purification. The meta is heavily reliant on Celestial Purification right now. Celestial Purification will 
always cleanse your heroes will help to cleanse your heroes um, every three turns which is super useful and you cannot deny that it is definitely one of the best and most broken accessories in the entire game okay for new players i didn't suggest you to get this because i think it will be such a waste that you are not actually doing enough damage in your raids so i think going for the sharpness to do to do better in your raids first and then actually having the chance to get the purification from the raids itself is probably a better idea for veterans uh, these are the same again there's only one good isabella accessory uh, purification is a must 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 okay but for the Galidus um, accessory you can start looking at Galidus might okay because uh, Rudy and Jack and Bile they're heroes that can do a lot of buff duration reduction and with the Galidus might it actually adds on one more turn of buff duration reduction and I think most top players are actually on that so definitely the way to go if you do want to do better in arena yeah let us might so then you come to day 13 where you get the willful ring or the guardian ring so you have to pick one and let me just tell you you need a lot of them so one is just going to be you know a, a small thing in your inventory you're gonna need a lot of them but let's talk about the willful ring first the willful ring is mainly used for pve support heroes and tankier pvp heroes like uh, jack Rudy, sometimes Wukong as well. Okay, the other heroes used in PvP right now I don't think are that tanky and they can be one shot very easily. Okay, which is where the Guardian Ring comes in because Guardian Rings are needed for PvP right now. They will protect your hero for three turns. But then again, you know, as I mentioned, many players are starting to build up the Galidus Might accessories, which will reduce the Guardian Ring's effect very quickly as well. So it's kind of like um, a gamble, I would say. Um, but for newer players, I think Guardian Ring will still benefit you quite a bit. Okay, until you climb a little higher. The Willful Ring though, um, is not really used in the PvP meta right now, but it's extremely useful in PvE because it protects your frontline units and actually gives them kind of, and actually heals them when they, their HP drops below 50%. So I would say that actually going for the Guardian Ring here may be the better choice and then uh, over time you can start to synthesize for other Willful Rings for your PvE units because I don't think it will take that much damage in PvE anyway if you have proper PvE gear on them okay um, so I think the Guardian Ring is probably the better choice here and finally, we come to the myth 7 out of Old Jewel, which is going to make its first debut as a freebie. So many new players probably don't know how myth jewels work, right? Myth jewels actually have two substats from the usual jewel. But for 7 out of Old Jewels, they have three substats. Um, because the first substat is a combination of two different effects. Like, as you can see on the main stat side, there's two different effects, right? And then when you myth awaken the seven eye of old jewel you actually gain additional substats so since this is a selector i'm not gonna waste time evaluating what is better what is not okay because this is not like you are just getting a jewel out of nowhere okay this is a selector which means you have the power to make the right decision so i'm gonna talk about the most useful one first and that is the one hp survival so this is literally a free one hp survival jewel for you with an additional life steal and usually this is given to the counter unit of the team okay because whenever that hero counters he will also he or she will also life steal back quite a lot of health so the best substats to go with that are probably lethal rate and crit rate and effect attack okay effect attack is so that you can secure more damage and ignore block uh, heroes like Abel, Yon, He, Dylan will all really benefit from having this combination. You can also use Crit and Lethal Rate as the base, as the sec. You can also have Crit and Lethal Rate as the myth stat because usually those counter units are equipped with speed weapons and they do not have very high lethal and crit rate unless you know you have supporting heroes that help to boost that amount 
Like if you have Fenrir on your offensive team, then your Dillons will naturally have about 60% lethal already. So that means you may want to make up for that missing critical rate and you could go with critical rate so that your uh, you know, counter units can hit extremely hard and slay through the entire enemy team. So that's definitely one possible idea. Why did I also put status effect cast rate here is because sometimes your counter heroes use, use status rings like Electrify, like Stun, like even Death as well. Okay, like Gerard. So I think having more status effect cast rate is actually beneficial for those heroes, okay? So that you, when, so that they'll be able to cast their status effects with more accuracy and they will definitely land those which can guarantee you a win. So it really depends on the hero you want to give this to. And usually it will be for the counter unit of the team, okay? So if you decide to go with counter rate and counter attack damage, uh, you can also go with the following myth stats because the idea is the same. You This is strictly for the counter unit, okay? Because heroes that are not countering, not geared with counter armor, are not going to benefit from the counter attack damage and counter attack rate duo anyway. Next up is the skill use trance and status resist. So I used to not really like this combination, but I realized that skill use trance has progressively been used more and more in PvP now. So I think having additional status effect resist for that particular hero is going to be very useful. And this can honestly be used on so many heroes depending on your preference. Some people may choose to use this on anti. So if you are looking at anti as an example, Anti probably will benefit from having more lethal rate or critical rate depending on what you use her with. And if you use her with Vanessa, then critical rate will be better. Or if she already has very high critical and lethal rate based on your you know, masteries, jewels, heroes, then you may look at lethal damage and critical damage instead. So it really depends, you know, uh, who you decide to give this skill use chance to. You may even think of using it on Fi so that she's able to, um, so that she's able to use her skills more and land the Agnes Flame better. And in that case, you may think of increasing her cast rate instead, or increasing her lethal damage and crit damage because, um, because when she becomes immortal, her crit rate increases by fifty percent. So there's no need for additional crit rate there. And if you're using her with Fenra who boosts lethal rate by 50%, then there's no need to boost additional lethal rate, right? So going for lethal damage and crit damage is going to help Fi as well. So yeah, it all these options are possible. It just depends on which hero you want to gear, okay? And then we have the last one, I think that is the most useful and it's block rate and block damage reduction. Now the combination of block rate and block damage reduction is so good, just so good. But I won't really recommend newer players to go for this because usually this is only... Usually block gear is kind of uh, used by top players. Why do I say that? It's because they have the fighter so to support that. Okay, if you're using... And newer players don't really have the grade 7 fighter so that boosts the block rate. So your block rate may not be super high. So you won't get the full benefit from the block rate duo anyway. But it's really, really, you know... But it's really, really obvious that the block rate and block damage reduction duo should pair up with the all damage reduction, right? Because that will make your hero so tanky and I think that is definitely one of the most obvious combinations to go for. However, you can also decide to go for the above options which increase damage and status effect cast rate, again depending on which hero you want to gear. Because block armor is not specifically you know, limited to only tanky heroes, you can even make a DPS unit tankier through block rate armor. And with this jewel on a DPS unit, you can potentially also you know, increase the bulk of the hero while also increasing like things like lethal damage or critical damage. So again, it depends on which specific hero you will want to craft for. And with all that in mind, if you're still unclear what kind of Myth 7 of Old Duo you want to pick for what kind of hero, feel free to ask me in the comments and I'm sure many players who are watching will also be able to help you or also go to Discord and ask them there as well, okay? So I hope this video helped and if it did, do give it a like and subscribe to my channel. Big shout out to my channel members, Diem Lee, Phoenix, Yamaki, Hibiku and Reggie Bautista for the support. 
stay tuned for more videos thank you so much and see you